Okay, welcome to this uh, lecture on uh, microscale transport process. What we were discussing in the last class is uh, slip flow. We we started uh, we started working on uh, what we call slip slip flow. Okay. Uh, what what do we what do we said at the very outset that depending on what is the value of Knudsen number, Knudsen number is lambda by L. Depending on what is the value of Knudsen number, you can be in different regimes. If Knudsen number is less than 10 to the power minus 2, then it would be continuum flow with no slip. Flow with no slip, and if it is between 10 to the power minus 2 <coughs> and 10 to the power minus 1, then it would be continuum flow with slip and then if it is uh, between 10 to the power minus 1 and 10, then it is, it, this is con considered as transition flow between continuum and free molecular flow and the equation that is used is Barnett equation and Knudsen number greater than 10, this is referred as free molecular flow where molecular dynamics collision between molecules that will govern the properties, continuum assumption cannot be taken. Now what we are doing in the last class is we were trying to solve something which is referred as microquiet flow that means there is one plate which is moving at constant velocity u and there is another plate which is fixed. Okay. This plate is moving at a velocity u and in the last class what we did is from Navier-Stokes equation we showed that the solution would be uh, something like this u is equal to c1 y plus c2 that we have already derived in the last class that this is this is a this is a standard form because of certain assumptions, we had taken several assumptions, we had taken translation invariance of the setup okay, along, along the, if this is x, this is y and <coughs> perpendicular to the paper is z, then there are translation invariance uh, of the setup along x and z direction, only u will vary only in y direction and uh, there is uh, only pressure, no, there is no pressure present, so only pressure present is hydrostatic pressure that is cancelled out with the gravity and things like that. So, with certain assumptions, we ended up with this expression u is equal to c1y plus c2. And what we said is that for no slip boundary condition, at y is equal to 0, u is equal to 0, and at y is equal to uh, some value, uh, what did we call last time? Uh, h yes this is at y is equal to h u is equal to capital u so this is this is what we this is what we have and uh, the, the, with this boundary condition we said that from the first boundary condition immediately we have c2 is equal to 0 okay and from the second boundary condition we get a value of c1 so that is how we ended up with this formula u by capital u is equal to y divided by h okay in dimensionless form you can write u bar is equal to y bar all right so this is this is this is the formulation uh, using navier stokes equation with no slip boundary condition no slip means u is equal at the wall the velocity of the wall uh, the uh, the fluid assumes fluid fluid uh, attains the velocity of the wall that is that is the idea now, if you impose a slip boundary condition, first, I, I mean, I mentioned in the last class that this equation remains same. This is the governing equation and this remains same. However, the boundary conditions will not be same. You cannot assume the wall velocity to be same as or, or the fluid near the wall will attain the velocity of the wall. This would be somewhat different. So, these boundary conditions will be different. So, the magnitude of C1 and C2, they will be different. So, that is that is the idea. Now, what we need to understand here is that the gas surface, I mean I, I need to focus further on gas surface interaction 
near the wall. I mean, we 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 mentioned there is fluid to be uh, gas here because gas will have mean free path uh, which is a little higher and so it is likely that you will be working in this I, I mean this this is the regime that we are referring to and you can uh, for, for a liquid anyway the mean free path would be less so uh, the applica applicability of slip boundary condition will be more uh, important the slip boundary condition will be more important for uh, gas surface uh, or, or flow of gas through a micro channel. So, you have gas surface interaction near the wall. So, what we have here is the sub, su the sub layer, the sub layer at the interface, at interface few mean free path few mean free path thick, few mean free path thick, okay. this sub layer is referred as Knudsen layer, this sub layer is referred as Knudsen layer when Knudsen number is small, when Knudsen number is less than 0.1, less than 0.1 means less than 10 to the power minus 1. So, Knudsen number is less than 0.1, the Or, or I should say when the Knudsen number is less than 10 to the power minus 2, so it should be 0 0.01. When Knudsen number is less than 0 0.01, the effect of Knudsen layer is insignificant. So, what does this mean is average velocity, average velocity and temperature of gas near the wall is continuous. and equal to the velocity and the temperature of the wall. Okay. So, if this is the condition, if average velocity and temperature of gas can be gas near the wall can be considered. If, if that is continuous and equal to the velocity and temperature of wall, if this is the case, then you can assume uh, or then you can extrapolate, extrapolate the bulk flow to the surface. However, when you have this Knudsen number which is higher at, at high Knudsen number, at high Knudsen number, the collision frequency is low. The collision frequency, collision means collision between molecules, that frequency is low. So, what this means is 
equilibrium between the velocity or temperature velocity or temperature of the wall equilibrium between this quantity the velocity and temperature of the wall and the same near the wall near the wall this is the other quantity cannot be established cannot be established so equilibrium between the velocity or temperature of the wall and the same near the wall cannot be established okay so in that case uh, i mean this is this is possible only when the collision frequency is low collision frequency is low when the mean pre path is much higher so mean pre path higher that means the number of collisions is low so unless molecules they collide if they collide lot of, i mean several times then the it, it would be easy for the equilibrium to be established but that is not possible if you have high neutron number or in other words you have low collision frequency so so there would be some amount of discreteness in this process okay so in that case you have to consider interaction between the gas and the solid molecules gas and solid molecules molecules from microscopic sense not macroscopic i mean not not the not the not using continuum rather you have to consider the collision the interaction between gas and solid molecules from microscopic sense because the equilibrium has not reached so you cannot consider the velocity or temperature of the wall as same for the fluid that is next to the wall now what is done here is we have to introduce two concepts at this point one is what we call slip velocity the tangential the tangential velocity one mean free path one mean free path away from the wall that is equal to is this is considered as u wall plus lambda du dy at wall what are we doing exactly can you guess what 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 is happening here you are assuming that the velocity next to the wall the velocity that is attained by the fluid next to the wall that in case of a no slip boundary condition we assume that that is same as equal to u wall okay now we are saying that it is not exactly u wall but little different from the u wall and what is the little difference so we said that we are not exactly on the wall but one mean free path away from the wall what is the dimension of one mean free path if you if you and I, I mean i can i can quickly refer for you lambda of nitrogen at one bar pressure that is equal to 70 nanometer all right so that is the that is one mean free path now if you consider not exactly the wall but one mean free path distance that means 70 nanometer away from the wall and that point you want to know what is the velocity and what you do is you are assuming so u wall plus this is the distance away from the wall du dy at wall ideally if you if you expand it there should have been other terms as well right so you are only taking the first order term and not other terms i mean you, you are you are perfectly you are permitted right i mean if you do not know what is lambda if i instead of lambda i say h can you tell me what is the velocity of the fluid 
if, if the velocity at the wall is u wall, what is the velocity of the fluid at distance h from the wall? And if h is small, you can expand it by Taylor series. No, exactly that is what we have done. Only thing is we have only picked up the first order term and not the higher order terms. And that is what is referred as first order slip condition. First order, this is this is referred as this condition, this is referred as first order slip flow condition. First order slip flow condition. All right. And this this is now this is what we are going to call the slip velocity. This is what we are going to call the slip velocity. Uh, it is it is not exactly uh, the, uh, uh, the same. I mean, now we will we will tinker. Now we will play with this equation further. But essentially, first order and why first order you understood why we are calling it a first order. But this is not the final form of slip velocity. Now we will play with this. Let me let me define couple of quantities here. One thing we must appreciate that if this is the wall and if this is the molecule, this comes and hits here and then it gets reflected. That is the idea, right? We are talking about molecule collision of molecule, gas molecule with the solid wall. So, this is what we are referring. So, what we can write here is that the incident molecule, incident molecules carry tangential momentum and there is one term called tangential momentum accommodation <laughs> it is quite a long term accommodation coefficient i have not i am i i i know so many coefficients this is really the long so so many words in a one coefficient now this is tangential momentum accommodation coefficient this is given as sigma v that is equal to tau i minus tau r divided by tau i minus tau w what are these taus tau i is equal to tangential momentum of incoming molecule incoming molecules incoming molecules tau r is equal to tangential momentum of reflected molecules and tau w is equal to tangential momentum of wall. Okay, so, if you have these tangential momentums, if these are defined, but the point here is that these molecules carries with it some amount of tangential momentum, that means momentum in this direction. And then you have uh, the wall itself may be moving or wall itself can be static. So, if the wall itself has a tangential momentum, an incoming and the reflected molecule. So, this is the accommodating these terms one has a co some coefficient known as tangential momentum accommodation coefficient which is defined by sigma v. Now, what we have in this case is instead of writing these as the these as the slip flow velocity the, the, these as the slip these as the slip flow velocity. Okay. Instead of writing these as slip velocity uh, the, the what we write in in uh, I, I mean which is which is more uh, I would say more comprehensive more more uh, more detailed one is the expression for slip velocity for an isothermal wall for isothermal wall of temperature T w T w there is a slip slip velocity given by maxwell slip velocity expression given by maxwell this gives u gas which is the slip velocity minus uw which is the velocity of the wall i mean if you think that wall is fixed then you will consider uw to be zero no problem 
2 minus sigma v divided by sigma v lambda del u del y. What do we have? This is this came as a first order slip flow condition using Taylor series expansion. Then they said that okay, I need to add some accommodation coefficient on this expression, and that ex that co that factor being 2 minus sigma v by sigma v. Okay, these they have shown. I mean, by some other consideration. That is that is why we we already mentioned name of a scientist here. Now. More importantly, for monoatomic gases, for monoatomic gases, for monoatomic gases, uh, U gas minus U W, this quantity U gas minus U W, that would be equal to that factor two minus sigma v by sigma v remains same. However, the lambda, the mean free path, that has an expression for monoatomic gases. And that expression is mu square root of pi divided by rho square root of 2 r t w. This is an expression uh, for mean free path. This is an expression for lambda for monoatomic gases. You need to check the book on physical chemistry to find out how they arrived at this for monoatomic gases, the expression for mean free path. Anyway, that is not uh, exactly under the this this you can you can figure out this is uh, how this expression for mean free path is obtained uh, check the book on physical chemistry now so this is the expression for monoatomic gases that u gas minus u w is there is a factor which has been put there because of this tangential momentum that incident molecules they bring and then this del u del y this is arising from taylor series expansion and this is the expression for lambda all right. So, if somebody wants to know what is the slip velocity, then this is the slip. This is this u gas is the slip velocity, and u w if it is a fixed wall, then it is zero, and for the wall that is moving at a constant velocity u, then u w will be capital U. So, this is the expression for first order slip boundary condition given by Maxwell. Now, if we have this information at our, if we have this information with us. How do we solve this problem? What was the problem? U is equal to C1 y plus C2. We said that remains same, right? Navier Stokes equation for what? We said it is it is basically one plate is fixed and the other plate is moving at a velocity u, capital U. In that case, the small u, the velocity at any location y, y starts from y goes vertically, y is equal to 0 at the fixed plate, and it goes up and y is equal to h at the moving plate. So, this is this is the this is the uh, boundary condition and this is the, um, the so th this is the governing equation and the governing equation remains same whether you have slip or no slip that is what we said. Now, if we have this as the boundary condition how will you put this boundary condition inside and come up with the values of C 1 and C 2 that is exactly what you got right last time what you did you did the same thing and you have gotten C 2 equal to 0 and C 1 is equal to some value 1 by h or or u by u by uh, what did you get y is equal to h means u is equal to capital u so it is u by h c1 is equal to u by capital u divided by h and y c2 is equal to 0 for no slip boundary condition so now you have to put in put these this expression to this and come up with the generalized expression for velocity in case of that micro quiet flow so how do you do it we write here let us say we write u is equal to u by u w. We try to make this dimensionless and y is equal to y by delta. I mean delta is equivalent to h. I mean just because that we have moved from no slip to slip just because we have considered instead of a macro channel a macro case to a micro case so instead of h we are writing this as delta so we have these our basic structure remains same that means we have two plates so one plate is moving at a velocity uh, capital u and this distance is delta okay 
so let us write u as u by u w i mean don't uh, i mean we are we, we should have given some other name but we are not doing it i thought we are mature enough to play with this so y is equal to y by delta now in that case and the knudsen number would be equal to lambda by delta okay so if we start from this expression okay this is for a monatomic gas we don't need to i mean we, we let us write the general one now what we said is that u u at the or or we call this u s say u s minus u w okay u at the surface minus u w which is the velocity of the wall that is equal to 2 minus sigma v by sigma v into let me write this as knudsen number del u s del n what is n n is n is basically normal to this plate okay so n is equal to y here for this problem n is equal to minus y for this this part of the wall okay n is the normal okay so we can write this further we can and, and why are we getting into knudsen and number you understand that right knudsen and number is lambda by delta and then we have already y is equal to y by delta and n is equivalent to y when it comes to this direction n is same as y and when it comes to this plate n is equal to minus y because n normal is the is against the direction of y so the this this you understand that then then why why we have knudsen number because this delta will cancel with this delta all right so instead of writing it as lambda del u del y by delta we put the delta inside and make it knudsen number now if we with or, or we can write this as alpha del u s del n let, let me let me write this further i mean if i if i split this into lower wall and upper wall what do we get lower wall you have u w is equal to 0 u w is equal to 0 okay so what that and uh, uh, w is equal to 0 and not only that you have del u s del n is equal to del u s del y because y is y and the normal they are in the same direction all right on the other hand at the upper wall you have u w is equal to 1 because what is the definition of u u is equal to u divided by u w okay so u w is equal to 1 and in that case you have del u s del n that is equal uh, 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 other than that you have del other than u w is equal to 1 you have del u s del n is equal to minus del u s del y all right so these are the conditions one is applicable at the lower wall and the other one is at the upper wall okay now if you write that at y is equal to 0 if you write that at y is equal to 0 at y equal to 0 you are saying that u is equal to at y is equal to 0 u should be equal to you had c1 y plus c2 that is equal to nothing but c2 right y goes to 0 so this is nothing but c2 uh, and what is now the u as per the slip boundary condition as per slip boundary condition this u would be what this u would be we need to look into this expression this u would be u w will go to that side so it would be u w plus alpha del u s del n u w is equal to 0 the wall velocity condition is 0 so what do you end up with what do you end up with you end up with this u is equal to 0 plus alpha del u s del n at wall right 
one is this we are we are we are assuming u w to be 0 at the lower wall at y is equal to 0 and on top of that we say that at lower wall del u s del n is equal to del u s del y. So, using this we are writing this as 0 plus alpha del u s del n that is equal to alpha del u s del y at y is equal to 0 right and what is this del u del u s del y if we, if we take a if we, if we know that u is equal to c 1 y plus c 2 and if you take del u del y that is equal to c 1. So, what, what do we have alpha into c 1 alright. So, alpha into c 1. So, we have one expression that is c 2 is equal to alpha c 1 that is one expression we have in our at our disposal. What is the other one? Other one is that at y is equal to 1 you have u s that is equal to u w plus alpha del u s del n same same thing we are doing. What we have done last time we are using that same expression u w goes to the right hand side. Okay. Now, only difference is that here u w is equal to 1 at the upper plate at y is equal to h number 1 and number 2 this del u s del n and del u s del y there is a change in sign. So, these are the two things we need to remember. So, here you will end up with this is equal to 1 minus alpha c 1 right 1 minus alpha c 1. And what is u s? Here in this case u was c 1 y plus c 2 is equal to c 2. Here in this case it would be what? c 1 plus c 2 because c 1 y and in this place at, at this place y was 0 at the lower wall at the upper wall y is equal to 1. Why 1? Because we have defined y as y by delta at the very beginning. So, you have c 1 plus c 2. So, you have two expression one is c 2 is equal to alpha c 1 and the other expression is if I if I if I take this back again I write here c 1 plus c 2 is equal to 1 minus alpha c 1 this is the other expression. All right. Now, you solve these two expressions c 2 is equal to alpha c 1 and c 1 plus c 2 is uh, I mean solving does not it, it is no big deal because even you can you can put this uh, c 2 instead of c 2 you write simply alpha c 1 instead of c 2 you write alpha c 1. So, everything in terms of, so you basically eliminate c 2 and so what you end up with in that case is uh, I can write here as c 1 into 1 plus 2 alpha that is equal to 1 all right c 1 you bring all the c 1s to the left hand side and so you get c 1 into 1 plus 2 alpha is equal to 1 or you get c 1 is equal to 1 by 1 plus 2 alpha and c 2 we had alpha c 1 that means equal to alpha by 1 plus 2 alpha. So, earlier we had what we had c 2 is equal to 0 and c 1 is equal to uh, we had capital U divided by H, but now we have some other quantities. So, if somebody now wants to write what is the expression for U, he will be writing U d is equal to 1 by 1 plus 2 alpha into y, U is what C 1 y plus C 2 right that was the expression for U general expression, but now we are putting the C 1 and C 2. So, U is equal to 1 by 1 plus 2 alpha y plus alpha by 1 plus 2 alpha that is a c 2 that is a constant. So, this is the expression for u considering slip flow boundary condition you can you can you can uh, simplify this further and uh, probably the, the one uh, because alpha is your creation alpha is not uh, something which is uh, I mean alpha is basically some variable you clubbed uh, together. So, if you if you remove them you get because originally sigma v is something which is which researchers who are working in this uh, in this area they understand. So, this divided by 1 plus 2 into 2 minus sigma v by sigma v into notes and number. 
So, this is probably the expression that is uh, it is basically another form of this expression. So, what was the continuum flow u is equal to y corresponding continuum flow expression was u by capital U is equal to y by delta or y by h and in dimensionless form it is u is equal to y and in dimensionless form, form the slip flow condition gives u is equal to this, this expression and this expression is meant for then what meant for this micro quiet flow you have two plates the upper plate is moving at a constant velocity and the lower plate is fixed okay so this is this is how you do it now if somebody wants to know what is the now if you if you if we want to draw how this how this whole thing looks this is the plate that is moving at a constant velocity u and this is the plate that is that is fixed okay so if you have a slip if you if you have no slip boundary condition you can expect these to be the velocity profile right velocity is zero here and velocity is capital u here that is the that is the no slip boundary condition here also since we are retaining this u is equal to c1 y plus c2 form that means the velocity profile in this case will also be linear can somebody guess then what would be the form it will not be zero here definitely so it will start from here and it will end before this so it would be it would be like this <coughs> so this is the slip flow solution and this is the no slip Now, if somebody wants to know what is the volumetric flow rate per unit depth, depth is perpendicular to the paper. If somebody wants to know the volumetric flow rate per unit depth, Okay, and if if somebody wants to know the non-dimensional, this in non-dimensional form, then what he will do is he will find this is q, q running from zero to one u dy. That is the expression. If somebody wants to know that you have one plate fixed, other plate is moving. Now the this fluid that is pushed downstream what is the volumetric flow rate per unit depth perpendicular to the paper okay that that uh, commonly we, we try to find out and here what we find is if you if you want to do it in a non dimensional form it would be integration of 0 to 1 u dy okay now it would be your task when you go back after the class integrate this between 0 to 1 u dy and see that this value is equal to 0 0.5 and check the same thing with the continuum solution and you will find that it is the same value you get for continuum solution as well okay so that that you need to you need to do it yourself uh, so the conclusion that we draw is that volume flow rate volume flow rate volume flow rate e here is independent of Knudsen number. This is very important thing I mean you have from continuum flow you found out some volumetric flow rate okay you have fixed flex plate you have your moving plate and you found some volumetric flow rate what this says is even if you did all these things first order boundary condition etc the volume flow rate remains same so the whatever you had from continuum solution that was good enough. So that, as far as the volumetric flow rate is concerned, so this is not this is independent of Knudsen number. This this is I think is something very important you need to remember. Now this is for a micro quiet flow. Similarly, you can have something called a micro micro poisily flow. This is not uh, this should be pronounced properly 
this should be this should be pronounced properly and uh, this uh, i mean I, I we need to check the pronunciation now this micro micro poisily micro poisily flow this if, if somebody wants to wants to solve the same thing that you have done here for micro quiet flow instead of that if you do it for a flow through a tube flow through a capillary and uh, instead of no slip you want to go for slip boundary condition then what kind of expressions you end up with that i would like to uh, I, I mean i would i would not uh, solve it from uh, or the way we have done it here what i will do is i'll just give you the final expressions and uh, that that uh, that is that is all i i would like to say here now the the mm, the navier stokes equation in this case would will be will be settled to this form okay this form and so the solution here is Reynolds number divided by 2 dp dx that is the pressure gradient y square plus c1 y plus c2 this is this is the form of velocity i mean you, you, you remember what was the what was the velocity we have been working with parabolic uh, velocity profile etc there we have uh, a similar quantity we have uh, something into 1 minus r by r whole square that something we call this as 2 u 0 sometimes we call this u max so this is this is this is the type of form we have if we want to write it in a generalized manner instead of r if we write it in y we end up with an expression something like this now here if you if you do this same exercise with slip flow boundary condition i mean if you if you bring in the concepts that we discussed here you will end up with an expression which looks like this and the corresponding continuum solution is so this is the continuum solution and this is the first order slip flow solution Okay. So, this is the first order slip flow solution and this is the continuum solution. Uh, one, can, one can make some note here is that uh, d p d x is always negative, is negative. Okay. So, if d p d x is negative, then one must, uh, one has to have this quantity uh, r e by 2 d p d x into 2 minus sigma v by sigma v into notes and number. That means, the additional term that you have because of first order slip flow solution. Now, this is negative means minus of this quantity, this would be positive. So, what that means is that this quantity, this, this extra term that you have minus r e by 2 d p d x into this term, that is positive. That means, first order, first order slip flow condition gives higher flow speed that is one 
conclusion you draw here. Okay. Also, in case of a, in case of a Poiseuille flow, in case of a flow through a capillary, what you need to, I mean, what would be another thing is this U max. In case of microcuvette flow, this was not important, but flow through a capillary, you know that uh, at the center the velocity is maximum and all kinds of things. So you have a similar exercise you can do with U max. As a matter of fact, you can you can obtain this U max as equal to minus R e by 2 d p d x into 1 by 4 plus alpha, one can one can one can see this alpha is, 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 is of the same meaning as we had done earlier. In case of a microcuvette flow, we had a definition of alpha. So, you can one can come up with this, this, this expression, one can come up with this u max expression. So, these all these exercise that we do for for macroscopic flow, these exercise can be done with this first order slip flow boundary condition. So, what, what we said at the very outset, I, 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 I would like to go back once again, because uh, after, I mean, uh, today we are going to end this discussion on slip flow and we will move to another topic. Uh, what I would like to say at the very, what, what I have already said at the very outset is that there is this continuum flow with no slip, then there is continuum flow with slip and then there is transition flow and then free molecular flow. Now, this free molecular flow is ideally what you should be considering and continuum flow is at the other end. So, if you look at the entire spectrum, on one end of the spectrum it is the continuum flow and the other end of the spectrum it is the free molecular flow, which is the collision between molecules and molecular dynamics. However, this is computationally, the, it, it requires a lot of uh, effort. I mean, by if you if you want to track say thousands of molecules okay for say hours i mean computationally just tracking the molecules tracking the velocities after each and every collision it's 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 it is a tremendous task so in fact continuum flow is basically you make some assumption and then you the, the, your 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 um, the, the process of arriving to the solution is much simpler but you make certain assumption in case of continuum flow so you are in between these two these two bounds okay so when you when you work with macroscopic fluid mechanics you are in continuum flow and when you are in molecular dynamics you are in free molecular flow now where this this slip boundary condition or whatever we discussed today as first order slip that stayed somewhere that is basically what, what we call a make do approach i mean you have uh, uh, I mean, you know that you are not doing the right thing. The rigorous thing would be free molecular flow, or if you can make, if the other rigorous thing would be continuum flow, based on which you are writing uh, this Navier-Stokes equation. Now, these slip boundary condition here, you are kind of, you know that you neither you are you are in a regime where continuum flow assumption cannot be taken. However, you do not want to invest that much of effort in getting into the free molecular flow. So, you are somewhere, so you, you come up with a, uh, with an approach which is more, more sort of uh, practical. You come up with an approach which is, uh, which we, where you do not require that much of computational time and at the same time you do not uh, uh, leave out all the understanding of continuum flow. So, this is definitely, this is not 100 percent rigorous, however, this gives you the <coughs> this gives you the right, uh, uh, I, I mean by balancing these, you can, you can, you can learn a lot of these, a uh, uh, lot of, lot of, you, you can get a lot of insight into this kind of flow. So, today I would like to stop here, uh, basically to, today, today I would like to From the next class, what I would be doing is I will be talking about something called a microstructured reactor.
there what i will uh, i will essentially tell you the how we can simplify various uh, fluid flow and heat trans uh, heat balance equations because in a, uh, i remember when i introduced this microstructured reactor i mentioned about this uh, a honeycomb type structure you might have uh, already you, you might you can recall it is like a honeycomb structure instead of a random packing randomly packed bed what we will have here is very specific uh, specifically uh, man, machined uh, channels okay and these channels will be acting as a reactor and as you uh, uh, so as the fluid flows through these reactors they will have they, there will they, they will have the fluid flow issues they will have the heat transfer heat transfer pro, uh, issues and they will have this reaction going on simultaneously so how to uh, i mean uh, of course you can you can very well say we can start from first principle pick up the best uh, model that we have in C by uh, from cfd and solve this but we should uh, what we have to do is we need we need some approximate method some some method to quickly come up with some solution so that we can compare various geometries i mean we should not uh, we are talking about thousands of such channels running parallelly so there are some is, uh, i mean people have uh, established uh, some method to uh, use uh, best of everything i mean basically it is it is partly a cfd model but not as rigorous as a cfd model should be some amount of approximation they put in there and they come up with a solution and then try, they they try to find out if if you would have gone for a rigorous cfd model how how much we differ from the actual solution so that exercise i will get into in the in the next class um, I, i think i'll require just one class for that and beyond that point i will be talking about uh, immiscible flow through microfluidic channels flow of bubbles droplets we have two phases which are immiscible and if you have a f if you have that kind of flow through a micro channel what what is the result so that is something which i will be taking up next so next class that means tomorrow's class we will be talking about this microstructured reactor and i will identify quickly what all assumptions you can make from the most rigorous cfd model to get a quick solution and from next to next class we will will be getting into this immiscible flow through micro channel and that that is going to be the last uh, topic very likely uh, that is all i have for today uh, thank you very much